Hi guys, I am Rishit Shah from Tally School and in this video today we are going to see three different types of payment vouchers in Tally with GST and you can also download the PDF of this post. I will link it down in the description below but let's see what are the three different types of payment vouchers. The first is GST payment that is when you have to pay the GST to the government then second is payment with TDS and third is payment without TDS. So any payment with TDS, you can enter that in Tally and you will learn that today. Any payment without TDS, you can enter that in Tally and you will learn that today. That means you will learn almost everything about payment voucher in Tally and after this video, you will be easily able to pass payment voucher in any kind of payment voucher in Tally or any kind of payment entry in Tally with 100% ease. So let's go ahead and see the first entry that is GST tax payment. So when you create GST entries in Tally, I have created different posts for that. But when you create GST entries for Tally, let me show you. Then the difference between your sales and the purchases, the difference of the GST between your sales and purchases is the difference that you have to pay to the government because it is your tax liability. If there is a difference in negative, that is your purchases are more and your sales are less, then there will be a negative difference, which is a GST credit. So if I go into the balance sheet and if I press Alt plus F1, I go in current liabilities, duties and taxes. And if I go in GST, see there is CGST, IGST and SGST. All the balances are on the credit side. That means they all are my liabilities. Now I have to pay this balance to the government at the required date or before the due date. So I will show you how you can create entries for that. First is I am paying CGST of 1500 to the government. There is a small small thing that you have to consider before passing the entry in tally and I will show you that. So if I go into the accounting vouchers, I have to create a payment entry. So I'll select the payment voucher. I am already in the payment voucher. If you are not in the payment voucher, you can press F5 for the payment voucher and come here. Now before you create the GST payment entry, what you have to do is click on stack payment it is called statutory payment or press alt plus s that is the shortcut for that so if i click here select gst for the types of duties and taxes because we are paying gst now select the period from which you are paying the gst so if this gst is for the month of uh, 1st march to 31st march then select that or if it is for your quarter then select that in this example i'm selecting march month and the type of payment if it is regular payment if it is recipient liability that is reverse charge or if it is advanced payment that is you have received in advance from someone and you are paying gst on that so most of the times it will be the regular payment so i'll selecting regular now after you have selected the regular you will see on the top here statutory payment for gst payment type regular now what you have to do is press enter enter and you have to select the cgst ledger so if I select the CGST ledger here, press enter. And after I press enter, you will see the balance of CGST ledger. It is 143.67 because I've already created the entry of 1500 rupees. Let me show you what I did by going into that entry. So if I press CGST and go in there, I've selected statutory payment for GST payment type regular CGST 1500 rupees press enter and it is obviously be paid through the bank so select your bank account through which you are paying the GST then press enter it is the bank details even if you don't enter the bank details here it will be fine now press enter and CGST let's say you paid by check but if you paid online you can select that also so I'll select e fund transfer then 1500 rupees you can also select e others and just go ahead 1500 instrument number if there is instrument date that is the date on which you made the instrument this is generally used in case of checks but nowadays e-fund transfers are done so let me just go and select e-fund transfer 
and account number if there is any okay now provide gst details you have to select yes because this is where we are going to provide all our details of the amount we have paid like CPIN, SIN, Chalan identification number, BRN, UTR number which is generated once you pay the tax, payment date and so on. So let me first select net banking that is e-payments, then name of the bank you have to write, then CPIN, then CIN, BRN, UTR, payment date. These all the options are not mandatory here in tally but if you put in here you will have a record in tally as well so select enter and save the entry so this is how you pay cgst or sgst or any kind of gst to the government now moving to the second entry which is payment without tds so you are paying a simple payment entry which is without tds i'm sure most of the people watching this video are already knowing how to create a payment entry but let's create a simple payment entry fast so even if you are seeing it for the first time you can learn from here so if i go into accounting vouchers i'm already in the payment voucher you have to do nothing let's say your office expenses are 5000 rupees and press enter come to the debit side select office expenses ledger or select the expenses ledger for whatever expenses you have created for example if you have created a ledger for t expenses or if you have created a ledger for accounting expenses any kind of expenses will be under either direct expenses or under indirect expenses press enter by selecting that ledger and 5000 press enter now i have enabled the cost center locations for this ledger so as soon as i press enter it will give me the cost category cost center and other details so i have created cost category and centers as the places so gujarat is the cost category and in there different cities like kach surat i've created as cost center so i'll just select that by the way if you want to see the videos on cost centers in tally i've recently published published three videos and you can go and check it out on the tally school channel i've created in a separate playlist as well so select that and this is how you select cost centers in a payment entry in tally and credit obviously you can select cash or bank by whatever means you pay so i select cash cash details you can skip this details and press enter and save the entry so this is, was a simple payment entry you can do it anytime and it is one of the easiest vouchers or entries in tally now the another entry that we are going to talk about is payment entry but with tds let's look at the example from our post payment entry with tds so what is here happening is that you are paying 1 lakh to your employee as a salary and you are deducting TDS at 10% that is 10,000 rupees and you are paying rest 90,000 to the employee through the bank. So here we need two ledgers that is salary ledger and direct expenses because for us uh, as a company as an employer you have direct expenses that is salary is your direct expense and TDS ledger under duties and taxes. TDS ledger is very easy to create and it will be just under duties and taxes and that's all. So I have already done the payment entry for TDS. I will just go there and show you how it is done. I meant TDS and press enter. Okay. So first of all, select the date for for which you want to create the entry then press enter and come to the debit side and select basic salary or the salary ledger that you have created press enter it will be under direct expenses as i said then again i have created different types of cost centers these are employee cost centers and employee categories so it is showing kajal as an employee so press enter and one lakh rupees if in your tally these details are not shown then it's okay don't worry about that because they are cost categories and cost employees sorry cost centers which i have created 
then credit side enter the TDS ledger because we are deducting TDS and TDS is our liability which we have to pay to the government we are deducting from the employees and we pay to the government so TDS is a liability it should be created under duties and taxes and right now we are taking credit on the credit side so TDS 10,000 rupees and credit bank the remaining salary will be credited to the bank account of the employee which is 90,000 rupees so bank and 90,000 to the bank so on debit side we have 1 lakh on credit side we have 1 lakh so our ledgers are matched 10,000 is the TDS 90,000 is the salary press enter basic salary through check these are all the bank details which we can provide so I'm just showing you instrument number let's say it is 1 2 3 4 5 6 and date is 1st April press enter and save the entry so this was the payment entry with TDS now let me show you the balance sheet and let's see the effects of the payment entry with TDS that we have done right now so I'm going into the balance sheet press alt plus F1 firstly we will see the TDS that is under capital account it can be under duties and taxes as well it can be under, under capital account as well so if I go in and press ctrl plus enter I can change it to duties and taxes as well and there is an option of TDS nature of payment any no okay so I have changed it to duties and taxes now you can see in duties and taxes if you are maintaining personal accounts it should be under capital account but if you are maintaining a company accounts or business accounts then it should be under duties and taxes you can see now 10,000 on the credit side this is how easy it is to change the TDS ledger as well so if you have any questions about this then comment down below I will explain you but it is as simple if you are maintaining your personal accounts then there is no question of your liability because capital account is already your liability if you are maintaining business accounts then your capital account and liabilities are different and that's why TDS will be under duties and taxes now our other effects are will be in the balance sheet so if will be in the profit and loss account so if I go into the profit and loss account and press alt plus f1 I will see salary basic salary 1 lakh rupees under direct expenses so that is it and we have paid CGST I've already shown you how you can pay CGST in the balance sheet so this were the payment vouchers in tally this were the three payment vouchers in tally one is the GST tax payment second is with without TDS and third is with TDS so if you know the three types of payment vouchers which I've explained to you today you can create any payment voucher in tally any kind of because there is no other payment voucher except these payment vouchers in tally if you have liked this video then subscribe to tally school channel we are growing at a very great rate we are going growing very fast and becoming a bigger and bigger community if you think that someone needs to know about tally then share this video with him or her it might be very helpful to them and subscribe to tally school channel like this video because it is a way of showing you it is a way of you to showing me that you liked this video otherwise I won't be able to know whether you liked or disliked and if you have any questions or suggestions then comment down below and I will try to solve your questions or doubts also you can tell me that if you want to create a video or if you want me to create a video on a specific topic that you like or you don't know about in tally or GST then tell me in the comment section otherwise how would I know so I will create a video for that and thank you very much for watching the video